Hi, everybody. This is Jason Key at SB Grid. Thanks for joining today. Uh, I'm happy to say today we've got Jose Miguel de la Rosa Trevin. So Jose Miguel is, uh, is working in uh, Stockholm, but he's coming uh, to us today from Madrid. And he's the primary developer around uh, Cypion. So Cypion is a big CryoEM processing package that uses its own tools around XMIP, plus a bunch of other packages like RelyOn and Eman2 and Chimera and to be able to give you a, a one-stop shop of all of the cryo OEM processing tools that you might need to run through a workflow. So, um, Jose Miguel, could you share your screen? Yes, thanks. All right, and if you've got questions, feel free to put them in the chat. You can send them to me. And if uh, I can um, interrupt if it's uh, appropriate to interrupt or we can save them to the end and people can unmute. And uh, we, uh, I think we'll have some time for discussion at the end as well. So. Go right ahead. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Jason. So it's a pleasure to be again here uh, talking about our work uh, in the SP Grid winners. Uh, also, thanks to Michelle for all the coordination. Uh, I think uh, this SB Grid ID as well as the platform is really useful for the structural biology community and not only the software installation, but also these. Uh, uh, outreach work, like uh, all these uh, very good seminars and all the documentation. Uh, I think this is fantastic. So uh, thanks for the invitation and uh, keep working on this great uh, community. So as you mentioned, uh, today I will be uh, mainly talking about the work that we have been uh, doing for Cypion 3. So, so this is a major version that we are about to release uh, at the end of this month or in maybe beginning of November. So we're very close to the, to the release. So we're polishing the, the last uh, things. Uh, and then uh, in this talk today, I will be showing uh, what has been the focus of the main lines of, of work and, and showing how the, the framework uh, is being consolidated as a distributed environment for, for developing uh, software uh, for CryEM. So as uh, Jason was saying, I'm currently working uh, as a software engineer in the CryEM uh, facility in Stockholm. Uh, so we are part of the uh, national hub for biological science. It's uh, called SciLife Lab. And this is a kind of consortium uh, between four of the main uh, Swedish universities. So Karolinska Institute, uh, KTH, uh, Stockholm University, and um, Uppsala University. For uh, so in, in this side life lab, there are many other facilities and research groups. So this uh, is a very dynamic environment that we enjoy because you have uh, uh, facilities that focus on the technology and more like services and delivering uh, results. And then at the same time, you have a research group. So you are like a, a good feedback uh, loop where you can interact uh, with the users and, and the researchers. Uh, in the CryoM part, uh, we are not the only facility uh, in Sweden. So as part of the national facility, there is another uh, node in Umeå uh, that provides the same service. So we, we work as a whole national facility and, and users uh, apply and get time for the instrument. And then uh, they can go either to Umeå or to Stockholm to collect data and, and the, the experiments. So uh, today, uh, this talk will be arranged a little bit, uh, mainly in three points or three parts. So first, I will be introducing a little bit what Cypion is, so not too much because in uh, other talks or materials online where you can framework. So actually, uh, I was here two years ago presenting Cypion, uh, the, the whole framework and the basic idea. So you can go back and, and see this uh, online. Uh, I would like to kind of showcase a little bit how the same framework can be uh, seen through perspective. So you can be interesting uh, from different uh, interests, let's say. Uh, so the second point is that we have been uh, putting a lot of uh, improving the, the software infrastructure. So it's not a big part, but uh, addressing many challenges and uh, things that we need to do in order to move forward the development and, and make it uh, continue uh, and be ready to allow more developers and, and keep up with the new uh, scientific tools, not only in CryEM, but in general. And then finally, I will uh, show some of the new plugins or new methods that are being integrated. So I think 
is has been also uh, uh, and has been successful so far that the, this uh, working in the core uh, to to do new developments, new methods, new plugins, and I think this has been uh, good uh, things that we have been advancing in both uh, front front of, of the software. So. <clears throat> I always say that if I have only one slide uh, that I want to show what Scipion is, could be something like this one that you are seeing here. So in the middle is what we call the Scipion platform, Scipion framework. And then basically this is like, a, we always said integration framework. So the idea is that we can use under this framework, or this uh, umbrella, many of the, of the software tools that we have uh, available for, for Crayon data processing. So under the hood, you will have like for Lion programs, XMIP programs, Eman system, even software, uh, proprietary software like CryoSpark. And then what we develop is like a, a data model. So a core uh, definition, how this process will work. And, and then this allow us to integrate many tools in a smooth way. So the users then uh, can use the framework and then we see a integrated interface, a common interface where you can launch new jobs to the queue or to your local workstation. Then you can analyze results, 2D classification, 3D. Uh, and then this is independent of the program that you use. So we um, develop visualization tools in Scipion. And then we also reuse uh, the, the visualization that are implemented in some of the packages like Eman2 or Bstop or other software. And then on top of, of this framework, as I was mentioning, uh, there are different use case or different perspective that you will be kind of interacting with this framework. One, you can be a structural biologist or a user. You have your data, then you want to run a, a, whole, a whole processing pipeline. So before this version was mainly single particle uh, processing, and you will see that now there are uh, new additions to this. That you can do other type of uh, data analysis and processing. But then also you can be a facility where the the priority can change. So maybe in a facility you are more interested in having like a real time feedback and have more like a quick uh, analysis for your data and how the data collection is going. And if it is worth to, to keep collecting this data or maybe switch to another uh, sample or another grids. And the final group here that I have in, in this slide is the software developer. So maybe you have a program or a method and then you want to make it available or make it more visible to a broader audience. So I think uh, Scipion is also a good framework to, to allow you to integrate this tool. And then in, in version, we have uh, tried to improve uh, the current infrastructure for allowing developers to do this. So as I was mentioning uh, before this version, uh, the focus was initially mainly single particle analysis. So this means that you could start uh, the whole uh, workflow. So you start input, importing your movies, then you do movie alignment with different programs, you do rely on motion core, then you can do at the same time a CTF estimation, again, with different options. Uh, also, you can go to particle picking, and here, I think we have a lot of tools, and, and it's a, like a Crayolo, XME picking, rely on, and many other tools, Geotomash. And uh, from that to the whole processing pipeline. So you can do 2D classification, 3D initial volume, a refinement and 3D classification. And finally, as you see in this image, uh, local resolution, all these tools you could complete uh, from the raw data to the final uh, three dimensional structure. But before, as I was saying, uh, mainly for, for single particle. So uh, from the facilities, at some point we realized that uh, the, the original structure was not well suited for this. And then we introduced something that we call a streaming data processing. And then uh, we didn't uh, create another uh, software product or different branch of the software. So we said like, let's try to modify the current uh, software to allow to do the normal processing when you, where, when you have the whole data set. Or it could also be that you have a stream of data that can be that you're downloading your data or copying across different servers or the data is being uh, acquired from the microscope. So in, in this line, uh, we focus on, on producing a lot of monitor tools, like a web reporting tool. We also had like some more advanced monitors that were integrated at some point with Diamond and their own uh, kind of monitoring system. And then, of course, our goal is to keep pushing the limit of this automation. Uh, so, so far, 
we are reaching article picking and 2D classification, but I think uh, the, there are not really limits, so we kind of push more. And of course, uh, for do, going to 3D, you will need to have like more hardware. Uh, but still, this is a uh, work ongoing, and then there are many developing developments not only in Excipion, but uh, Shamfroco that has done many uh, automation tools. So all of this is is open to keep pushing. And I think this is quite attractive for facilities that uh, has been one of the main users of Cypion as well. So there are different facilities in Europe and in the US and Canada and different places that has been using Cypion. So for, for developers, um, we have been trying to, to alleviate the, the whole, uh, trying to, when you are developing a new program, uh, trying to focus on what we can provide to make it easier for you to, to integrate a new program. So basically, when you are adding a new program, let's say you need to create what we call a protocol that is a Python script. And then this Python script, of course, has some structure where usually you need to convert your data. So if you come, uh, imagine that you are doing a program for 2D classification as in this box that is uh, in, in this slide. And then uh, you receive the input particles, but this came from Cypion. So it can, these particles, could have been produced by Eman, XMIP, Reliance. So this is uh, not relevant when you are developing your box. And this is something uh, really nice for developers. You don't need to deal with all the possible formats. You only need to focus how a set of particles is represented in Cypion. And then usually, as I was saying, the first step is converting this input for your program. So inside this box, you convert this for your for, for uh, how your program would like to have this data it can be a star file or HDS5 or whatever your program needs. And then usually you create a command line or many jobs. In this case, it's, for example, a Reliant job. Then uh, in one of these steps in the protocol, you prepare this command line. And then at the end, you create the output. But uh, what Cypion provides for, for you as a developer, there are many things. First of all, uh, there is a tracking of all these steps. So imagine. If it is a protocol that works as a movie, movies or micro, and then you have like a thousand of steps, this uh, stop and restart is uh, built in, in the framework. So it means that if the computer crash or you just stop or your time allocation stop in the cluster, uh, then you can easily continue this job. And then you as a developer, you don't need to do all the tracking, all the database management for, for the data storage. So this is handled. Uh, by the framework. And then of course we have, uh, you only need to create this uh, Python script and we, from that be for that. So I mean that this releases you from, from doing some graphical work and uh, things that are not that complex, but takes time and, and effort. Uh, and then of course we have also make it, try to make it as easy as possible to launch uh, the jobs into the cluster or multi-core computers. And then you have all, the whole workflow and all this tracking uh, you don't need to care as a developer. So this is the whole idea that we try to provide tools uh, and then you focus on your method and, and try to um, deliver the results. So in, in this new version, as I was uh, saying, uh, one of the main effort has been uh, refactorization or working uh, in the internal structure. Of course, this is a work that is not seen by the users or if not, uh, really uh, so attractive from a scientific point of view, but we, we thought it was very important to try to tackle these uh, limitations or improve the current structure. So it will allow us to keep growing. So in the previous version, in Cypion 2.0, uh, we call that version like pluginization. And basically what we did there, so all these green boxes here is a plugin. So it means that this is the, the Python code that will deal uh, between Cypion and the different software. So a plugin for XMIP, a plugin for Lion, Eman, and, and so forth. Uh, and then we did this in, in the previous version. So we separated each of these folders. Yeah, initially, there was a, a whole repository. And then we separate these folder, folders into plugins. So it has more structure. But then uh, we tried to go a, a bit further and then uh, organize better the internal structure. So we say like, was more standardized so each of these plugins have like different modules where you can easily define uh, the data types the viewers that are defining the conversion routine so this now has a, a much better uh, structure and better documentation so it means that 
if you are developing a new plugin, you have a, a, a template, a format that you can follow. So before it was like there, but not really explicit anywhere. And then another big thing was like this core infrastructure. Uh, before it was uh, core by workflow, was a single thing. And then we have to split this in, into th three uh, sub-modules. One is uh, by workflow, that is more basic things. So it will take care about the GUI, the workflow things, but there are things that are more basic. So are not related neither to CryEM or configuration. So it's a bit more general. <clears throat> and then there is another sub-module that is called uh, Cypion EM. So there are all these uh, data structures like set of particles, CTF, movies, micro, that are related to EM or a uh, single particle. And then this is a Cypion app where we put like some uh, configuration and some I say, things. And then uh, I think one of the main, main triggers for all this work uh, was uh, also change in, in the Python community. So uh, Cypion is mainly developed in Python. Uh, we have also like some C++ binding in XMIP that allow us to, to deal with images and, and do more efficient uh, processing. But then uh, in, in this year, to, uh, 2020 was the, the last one that Python uh, 2 was officially supported. So it means that the libraries will be there, but then there will not be any updates to scientific libraries like NumPy, SciPy, and many others. So this was a, like a, something we need to, to uh, go for it. So it was a big jump from the Python 2 to Python 3. And then I think in general, there are many optimizations like uh, using dictionaries and, and many other improvement in the language that I think we'd, uh, we will benefit from, from this uh, migration. And then at the same time, not only for Python, but we try to, to address uh, different things like uh, making the installation more standard. So now uh, it's possible that we install Cypion with uh, existing Python in the system, we send virtual environments, or we can also use Conda. All of these plugins uh, have a more natural in, in the Python ecosystem way to install. So you can use PIP or you can use Conda. So uh, this is more kind of a standardized now. So before it was kind of, but it still was more in all philosophy of uh, CryEM packages where you bundle your own Python and you put the, all the code there. Uh, I think now it's uh, more naturally integrated. And uh, I think this will improve a lot also the interaction with other uh, tools like this scientific software, uh, NumPy, and especially I think this is uh, quite important nowadays uh, where there is a lot of development as well in the artificial, artificial intelligence uh, libraries. So it's more easy that you integrate plugins and, and develop your own tools uh, using all of the existing. So also for developers uh, in the past, but we also have been improving this. There are uh, another addition. So in, in Madrid, uh, we have been developing uh, this uh, protocol statistics and, and reporting. So when you install Cypion, uh, you can uh, enable like doing some uh, reporting. So this doesn't send any data or, or any parameters or anything just like kind of counting what are the, the protocols and the tools that you use. And I think this is really nice uh, if you think as a developer, because you can see what are the tools uh, that are more used. So in this case, you can see that there are many subset manipulation. Then after this came a lot of Reliant tools. Uh, so I think the Reliant plugin is one of the most used one in, in Cypion, then CTFI and many other tools. But it's kind of a, a way that you can measure where the, the more used tools and then you can prioritize those when you need to kind of uh, allocate efforts. And then we have also integrated uh, automatic test testing. So there is a billboard that you use and then you can see when new changes are uh, introduced, um, if there's broken something or all the tests are passing and you have more confidence. And there is another tool that is kind of in between for users and developers that is this plugin manager. So once you create a new plugin, uh, then in Cypion you have this uh, simple interface, but quite useful where you can uh, click and select uh, plugins that you want to install in the system. So once you have a base installation, you can add more plugins. So uh, this has been more in the infrastructure part, but then uh, as I was uh, mentioning, it hasn't stopped to, for us and different uh, teams now to add new programs. So in Madrid, for example, 
that has also been developing XMIP and most as a software package with new methods. And then they have been doing a lot of research in GPU computing and adding new programs. They have also been working in, in uh, using net <clears throat> neural networks and deep learning for other tools like local resolutions and many other programs. So uh, together with the Cypion release will be a, a XMIP release, but it's another plugin at the end. And then we are also working on Cypion 3.1 plugin. So we're, it's almost there and we're also testing now and doing like minor bugs that are still there that we're fixing. There is a new plugin for system. Before of that, uh, there was like a separate program, CC, uh, like CTF fine and uh, free align, but then now uh, they have a group all this in system and then there is a plugin for that. Uh, there are more protocols from the previous version for CryoSpark and then more tools for, for this monitoring on, on the flight data processing. One of the big additions uh, that is still, of course, in, in beta development, it's not as uh, stable as a single particle, is a tomography. This is a, has been developed in Madrid mainly. So for tomography, uh, again, this first step was to define this data model. So what is the inputs and output from each of these uh, tomography protocols now? And then uh, basically this is a defining tomograms, subtomograms, still series, set of still series, uh, and then with this data model, then we can start adding either base protocols or protocols for, for each of the main programs. So I really think there are really a good set of tools from iMod, IMA, Dynamo, XMIP. So you see here in this uh, menu, you have many of the tomography tools. I think if you're interested in tomography, uh, just keep an eye on this development. Of course, that probably there will be uh, more bugs than in the single particle, but this is a natural thing and uh, it's a good that you if you try you provide feedback and i think uh, we will be very happy to to address them and uh, implement new uh, suggestions another uh, kind of branch of data processing is a kind of a natural thing once you have your uh, electron density map it's like do the model process a model building and then there has been a publication so there are like uh a lot of work in Madrid, mainly by Roberto Marabini and, and Marta Martinez. Uh, and then they have been integrating uh, software for this uh, model building and refinement. So you can see tools here uh, from PowerFit, Chimera, CCP4, CCPM tools, Phoenix. Um, so I'm, I'm not very experienced with that part, but you can find online tutorials and read this uh, publication if you're interested in this part. So it's like, a, now you can uh, continue your workflow. Not you cannot stop. On, you should not stop in the three D uh, map, but you can also go further and, and do in the same framework the model building. And very happy, and I usually mention uh, is this uh, local rec plugin. Uh, this uh, has been a very nice collaboration with Juha Huskonen. I, I must say that this is one of the first. Uh, contacts that we have with external developers that were developers adding methods that were not in, in the main uh, or in the main Cypion team. So you have at that time was in Oxford and then I remember that we had some discussions and uh, we tried to integrate these tools. So it was like defining subparticles out of the particles and then uh, this localized reconstruction other uh, addresses like different limitations like uh, symmetry mismatches and these kind of things uh, and then it was really nice to integrate uh, this new workflow and see how the existing tools could be used uh, for this so in this paper there is a new paper they have uh, updated the the plugin and the code and have uh, improved the, the original version uh, now you have a partially in oxford and helsinki and there is a you can find this publication where they show these trimers fibers uh, the resolution improvement uh, out of this virus in the capsid, and then also like a cool address like different CTF the focus and all these uh, symmetry mis mismatches. Also with Juha, uh, we have always like um, have been trying to integrate this helical processing. So this is still on hold, but we have done some work, but still it's not available. But uh, this is something we have pending there that maybe it will come in present in, in a new version. Uh, another uh, kind of uh, different branch of plugin that is this is even more different from cryem uh, 
So in our facility, we have been uh, integrating uh, tools and the workflow for the microscope for doing micro ID. Uh, and then for micro ID, you can use uh, tools that were already present for crystallography data processing. And then in our facility, we have this collaboration with another department in Stockholm University, the group of uh, Shadon So and Honji. Then uh, with Victor, that is a PhD student, we have started creating a whole new data model or a whole new kind of uh, domain uh, for doing this microready processing. So here uh, we kind of uh, realized that it was really important to do all this work in the, in the refactorization of the framework. Like we split very clearly uh, from the core of Scipion what was uh, more related to the general uh, bookkeeping and visualization things and what was more related to the cryo-EM domain or EM domain. So here, uh, these uh, micro-ID things uh, is a whole new framework. And the same, we have reused the, the infrastructure, but defined uh, new programs. So basically, um, now there are many tools from dials and some of them for XDS, but mainly the, the first prototype has been more focused on dials and different steps in, in the pipeline. Uh, for this, it will be a publication also coming, and we have also followed the same philosophy. If there are tools uh, provided by the given program, we try to reuse them. So here you can see some visualization of the different spots uh, that you can use uh, on top of the, the workflow. Uh, because this was a natural extension. Uh, when we were discussing about what type of processing they were doing and the problems they had, it was very similar to those that uh, led us to start developing Scipion, like they have uh, different software formats, uh, there were a lot of uh, temporary files or different uh, folders to keep track of different runs, and then there was a bit of a mess for a user's perspective. And then here, the idea is the same, that we have all these on the fly things, and many of the, the things that has been developed for the Crowian processing can be reused for this new type of uh, processing as well. So with this, uh, I think it's more or less what I wanted to share today. So basically for summarizing, I think uh, we have been focused a lot in this uh, core infrastructure uh, of Scipion, trying to make the, the framework more stable and more prepared for the more recent challenge, not only in CryoM, but also in other fields, uh, and also in the scientific community in general, the scientific software. Uh, the things are advancing, and then I think we need to be prepared to integrate more advanced tools and, and make things more standard that are, allow us to, to keep adding more easily. And not only us, I mean on other developers that are joining the, the community and the framework. I think this is a very important thing that we have been focused on that. And I, I must say that I'm happy to see that Cypion is becoming more a community driven project and it's not only a single group. So I mean that be implemented or not. So anyone now can develop plugin and of course we have a community there is a main team in Madrid um, in Stockholm there are other developers that were in Canada and are now in Spain there are people in UK so I think this is a uh, really nice and then there are many channels so you can go online and see a lot of uh, there is a lot of tutorial documentation of course we can always add more uh, we are never uh, happy with what we have and we want to keep adding more and we are happy to, to add anyone interested in, in the different channels. So there are Slack channels. We have like different, some are more focused on, on development, but the other stuff in data processing and configuration, installation. Uh, and even if you, have, you want to have like more private discussion for your facility or uh, you can create like another separate channel for that. So we will be happy to, to work and to talk to anyone. And finally, I think this is, uh, very important uh, thing to try to build a community and uh, push the open source software. Uh, not only saying like the software is online and available, but that we are committed freely to, to create a, a collaboration uh, infrastructure and platform where everyone is welcome and can uh, contribute to that. Uh, so with that, I think I'm going to acknowledge that so there are many people involved in the development. So it was initially in Madrid, that is part of Instruct, Inst uh, in, in, it's a European infrastructure for uh, structural biology with different centers. Uh, and then there is uh, many developers there. Pablo Conesa, that is the main uh, 
so, uh, project leader, also the XMIP team and many people contributing. Uh, but there are many other people, so as I was saying, people in Helsinki, in the Juha group, uh, Josue and Javier that were previously in McGill and now they have come back to, to Spain, to Madrid. Uh, in the LMB, there is Grigory Sharov that I, um, I appreciate a lot his efforts and contributing a lot to different plugins and his, his expertise. Also Joaquin Oton, more in the tomography part. And of course, I'm, I'm very thankful to my home institution at SciLife Lab. I think it's really good to have a supportive environment where you can develop new ideas and they are uh, very enthusiastic to, to kind of uh, allow us to, to develop new things and build this uh, software and this framework. Uh, and also this uh, collaboration with uh, the Stockholm University Department uh, with Victor and, and Honji and Chadon has been very productive as well. So with this, I, I want to thank also all the users and well, I'm happy to, to take any questions. Great, thank you very much. Um, there were a few questions. I saw that people can send questions in the chat. You can also you know, do the raise your hand in Zoom and uh, we'll bump you to the top of the list and then I can call on you, you can unmute yourself or you can just send me the question and I can go ahead and either you can unmute or I can, uh, I can pass it on on your behalf. Um, one question that I had just uh, earlier on for the cryoEM processing pipelines. Um, yes. You know, for data collection facilities, one thing that's really useful is to know you know, what parameters were used on the scope on which days by which users and to keep all of that in some kind of ongoing database that they sort of keep forever to keep you know a record of everything that they've ever collected and uh, those sorts of things is that included within the, the package do you are you able to pull um data from you know serial em or no, so this is uh, when we started working on this. Um, we when we started adding this streaming data processing, we didn't want to kind of complicate things too much. So we said like, okay, we will define this stream as a data folder that we can of monitoring. So that any data that is coming there, uh, this is what new items uh, we will define, right? So we didn't want to deal with serial EN or EPU, so like the actual data collection. And then in that sense, uh, it also allows you to have like, if you are downloading your data or copying, it's the same kind of uh, entry point. Uh, in that sense, uh, we were, um, Cyping will focus more on processing a specific project or data collection date. But I, I agree, this is a very important thing. So I can share, for example, in our facility, um, one of the things that I did at the very beginning when I arrived to Stockholm was what we call Cypion Wizards. That is kind of a, a script or a small GUI that you can develop that can help you to set up the, the acquisition collection, right? So you have a Cypion with all this capability, but then uh, usually as a microscope manager, or um, so you're mainly, you want to kick up the project more quickly, right? Uh, so these wizards are able to create templates of a workflow. So you can, uh, for example, select which program you want to use for, for a subset of them. And then this will create a workflow. In your case, uh, we have like different type of users. So this end up in different folders with the project code or session things. So all of these things that the wizard kind of handle. And it's a, basically a, a previous step of launching Cypion. So this wizard kind of prepare uh, the, the workflow template and these folders and we launched the project with all these things preset. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in my case, as I was saying, uh, this wizard ha has been dealing also with where the users come from. So we have like two systems. Uh, one system was like uh, where the, the national users apply for projects. Uh, we call this application portal. Uh, and the other was a booking system where you can allocate the slots. And then we, can, we need to take information from both to create this uh, so this is something we are working now, uh, have been working in kind of uh, making this much easier in a single system. And then in this system, I think I will add some of these things that you are mentioning, having like a more statistics about the parameters for every day and uh, see, but I think it's a two levels of things. So for Sapion, we were more focused on, on one session processing, let's say, and then this other tool uh, will be like more an overview of what's going on in your facility or collection days or yeah. uh, I think as, for us as a facility it's also important that you can 
at the end of the year or evaluation uh, time, you can show up how many users came, how the data collection were, in which of this data collection there was processing, yeah. uh, the processing went until uh, 3D or only 2D, so all the things uh, probably be better in, in a different layer. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree that it's very important. And here, I mean, you know, in, in our facility, sometimes we see the, the data processing uh, and the sort of statistics coming off of those. You can see when you're starting to develop the early signs of microscope issues, right? You, you know, that yeah. things are relatively stable and then things get a little squirrely, you know, like, okay, something's wrong, but you wouldn't necessarily know it by looking at the micrographs, but you know from you know, the, the statistics that are coming from the microscope that, you know, yeah. things are not normal and you, you know, you might um, reevaluate and sort of maybe even pause data collection and sort of step back and say like, okay, something here is not right, but uh, it's been super useful. We had a couple of questions that are uh, sort of um, uh, related things. One's about this processing pipeline and Matt, feel free to jump in if I, uh, you know, destroy your question here. When you're doing the streaming processing, uh, how do you pick up new movies? Can you, um, can you use an external program to sort of queue um, an API to notify that there are new movies present? Or does it monitor a directory or how do you? Um, yeah, right now it's monitoring the directory. Uh, so if you have a folder, it will be monitoring that folder. Um, but basically this is a, an import protocol. So I remember uh, when we were having some, this collaboration with Diamond, uh, the, the file system there was a bit more complicated. And, but I, I don't know if this ended up in a final release or this was a, uh, but I think it, you can also develop a different uh, import protocol and then you can provide the, the output. Uh, so there is an API where you can create these uh, uh, data objects. So you can have your, a different import. So imagine if you have a special kind of monitoring or something. Uh, that could populate the, the output. And then the, the next step will take from that. So the only one that is dealing with files is, is the import. So after that, it will be these output objects that are database files. And then, so from one uh, step in the pipeline to the next one is just this uh, database. Could you? So the, the only thing that will need to be modified or implemented is the import of uh, movies. Can you import it in an arbitrary step? Like if you didn't want to import movies, let's say you just wanted to I don't know, run motion core independently and then you know, import. You know. Yeah, there are different uh, yeah. points in the workflow. So you can import movies, uh, micro particles, uh, yeah. yeah. Volumes, so, mask, yeah. The, um, uh, another question was around, can you swap in and out versions? I know that um, uh, Pablo did some, you know, Pablo and I exchanged some correspondence about using links to sort of link into your own versions of, say, you've got Rely on already and you know it's, you know, works on your cluster. Or you might want to just, yeah. I know some user. Yeah, actually, well, there is a related question here. So maybe I will address both from Matt Harrington uh, about like yeah. uh, they want to use Cypion 3, but then they want to switch to Motion Core 2. Yeah, this is possible. So I think we had this in mind from the very beginning and the original design of Cypion. So basically you have a, a config file. So when you run Cypion, there is a main file. You have different variables for the different software. So this variable kind of reflects the to do for a site. If it is Iman, we call similar like Iman. If it is Reliant, we call Reliant Home. Uh, so it means that you could have one by default, uh, and then you can change things there. And even you can change as a user. So imagine if you want to test uh, installation on the computer, you could uh, have a different uh, config file. And then when you run Cypion, you say minus minus config and use this, this different one. Uh, yeah, I think we designed this, uh, as this from the beginning because we realized that the use will change from one piece to another. For example, in our cluster, uh, so there are different uh, versions of Relion and Motion Core. And so usually what I, I do is I install the, the basic Cypion, but I don't compile any of the software uh, except, F, except XMIP. So I, I just link to the existing one. So it means that you can use the same software outside Cypion, like Eman2 or whatever, than from Cypion. Because in, in some supercomputing centers, they have uh, optimization for this. So it doesn't make sense. You try to make a binary bill or whatever. So I think it's good that the user can have like Cypion as a kind of a processing uh, 
platform, but then can link to existing software in their system and how the MPIs work and all these things. Um, so this is very possible. Um, yeah. Within the versions, um, well, there is a limitation. Uh, sorry, Jason. But uh, you can't make like major jumps between versions, right? You're yeah, this is the main uh, thing that you need to make sure that it's a, ver a version that is supported by the by the plugin. Because uh, of course, if there is, for example, now a new Freelion version, let's say that it's a big version like 3.2 or something, and there are big changes uh, like in the command line, probably the code that is right now uh, will not work or will not have the new options. Uh, but yeah, basically it's the, in, in the range of versions that are supported. Yep. Let's see, I think uh, Pete Meyer had a question here. In the chat or? Yep. yep. Uh, so I, I guess my question, this is partially a scientific question and partially a technical question and it may not make a whole lot of sense, but when, when, with the concept where you have with being able to run a similar step with multiple different packages. I'm wondering if it would make sense to do something like an ensemble protocol where, you know, a researcher says, here are my micrographs, run every kind of particle picking you can on them and tell me which one you think looks best. Is that something that there's there's interest in or there's been progress on for, for Skipping? Yeah, so yeah, of course, this is one of the kind of evident uh, benefit if you have like such a uh, integrative framework, right? Like you can in the same place run and then you have the same output. And once you have the same output, then you can do some kind of comparison or analysis because uh, independent from where they come. Uh, yeah, we have some tools for that. So we have one protocol, for example, that is called uh, uh, picking consensus. So you can uh, plugging many outputs and then you can play with it and say okay I want to have an output that uh, is a consensus particle between a, a number of picker pickers so and you define a radius what you consider the same particle right uh, there are some some protocols that do this thing but then on the other side I think it's difficult in in all the steps to have a comparison because uh, the metrics or the algorithms in some cases are different. So it's not always possible to have like a, even if they produce the same output, uh, it's not easily comparable from one tool to another, at least automatically, right? Yeah, um, yeah the, the, you have like CTF. Logic is always the, you know, the question. Yeah, of, but sometimes you don't really. If there is something that can be uh, programmatically done. Uh, yeah, this is one of the advantages that you have uh, in the same format, let's say, or the same type of output. I was just going to say that sometimes, you know, for us anyway, sometimes for the pipeline, if we're just looking for some crude, you know, we want to just process fast, get some sort of idea of data quality. You might choose an application that maybe it's not, you know, 100% the best version, but it runs 10 times faster than something that's, you know, you yeah. know a better particle picker or something. So you'd be able to sort of evaluate like, all right, how much better off would I be, have been? But you know, I'm gonna go with this one because it's fast, and I just uh, I want to get some 2D classes and see what my you know data quality looks like or something. Yeah, yeah I think there are still a few steps that. So basically, but also there are some tools now that uh, I think that can be explored for that. It's like uh, when you do manual selection, right? After 2D classification, when you want to join, what are the good classes or in 3D? At least for, for a kind of simple uh, a workflow, right? When you don't have more complex things as a mask or more advanced analysis. Uh, and then th there are some tools now like this Cinderella that can select good classes. Uh, so I think this still needs to be uh, not only in Cypium, I mean like the, in the scientific part as well to how to kind of evaluate this in a more, in less, less sub subjective ways. Uh, uh, one, I think this will open many doors for, for more automation. Uh, sorry, I just I just thought this another one. I didn't want to miss it, but uh, you I know that there's um, support for schedulers. I think that there's what Slurm and maybe what like um, like SGI the um, grid engine. I think there's the grid engine plugin or something. What schedule? What schedulers can you use on the back end if you wanted to use a cluster? 
you you can um, so this is another thing we try to make it simple and flexible so we don't want to guess about any kind of uh, commands or configuration for the schedulers uh, so basically what we do is uh, you have a template file in Cypion and then uh, this template will be uh, kind of the, the script that you will submit to your scheduler so it means that you can plug in Cypion with any scheduler as long as you provide this uh, template and this then there are some variables that will be replaced by Cypion. So from the GUI, when you select a amount of nodes and these variables, uh, differently from Relion or other things, you can dynamically generate in your template. So in your template, you can say, I have a queue, uh, this is memory, this is a number of nodes. These are, uh, you can define this in the template. And then the GUI will generate this small uh, dialog where the user can fill these things. So it means that in your yeah. template, you cannot say, I have to A, B, and C, uh, and then A have a from memory or time or whatever, and then this will show up in the GUI. And then Cypher will provide these variables back with values, and then you can uh, replace in, in the template script. Uh, you have a few examples for a, a slurm, a slurm or, but basically any any scheduler can be configured with that okay. because basically you specified the command that you use to submit, maybe a command that you use to monitor it and get the, the job ID number, but uh, I think it's any any scheduler that as this long is as you are able to define this. The hosts.comp file, right? I think it's in a it's in a configuration file that the user can edit even for their own configuration. Yeah, exactly. And I think you could even I'm not totally, I haven't tried it, but you could probably even just SSH to another node in it and just like run them on another machine. Or something. Yeah, actually we haven't used that that much in that sense, but I remember I went to a course in Heidelberg and then uh, the admin guys has set up with this also, like the command for launching the job was a SSH and launching in a different machine. So this is something we also had in, in, in mind, but we haven't go that far yet, but I think it would be really useful. But you could define Cypion in a node and then make this SSH more natural, like you can define different uh, execution environments. So this was something we had in, in, in this host conf that you could define different sections, but it's still not, not there, unfortunately. All right, I think uh, that's it for questions. Any other questions, anyone? I think, uh, I think that covered it. Jose Miguel, thank you very much. It's uh, exciting to see it. I was particularly excited to see the tomography and micro ED stuff in there, just because you know, I know that those tools, people struggle. I know people are, mm. people with tomography data. Thanks a lot, Jason, and all this be great uh, for you and all for, for attending. Great. It's been yeah, thank pleasure you. to come. And uh, see you next week. Okay, bye. bye. Thank you.